joys that I have as a preacher is I love seeing people grow. You know, I really love that process where people are coming to Christ and they're saved by Christ and grace overwhelms them and I just see how excited they are. But oftentimes after that, people can have that zeal and grace and then they'll slowly drift away. But one of the things that just really builds my heart is seeing them take that joy and that grace and that forgiveness of God and they say, I want to grow. I want to be like Jesus. I want to change. And so when I see people grow and change, that really makes a difference for me. It just uplifts me so much. I love being able to preach a sermon. I see people actually listening and actually saying, you know, I got something out of it and I want to apply this to my life. Or I hear about people saying, you know, I devoted more time in prayer because... I just wanted to spend time alone with God. But one of the times of growth that really excites me when I see people change is their heart when they start prioritizing other people before themselves. Because that's the point when I start seeing and I say, you know what, they're starting to understand everything about Jesus. They're starting to understand what Jesus had to say about sacrifice. They understand how grace is so amazing and it overflows in our lives that the only expression that we can have because of the greatness of God's grace is that it has to overflow into the lives of other people. I mean, people who truly understand grace are those that are willing to share and spread that grace as well. And and so one of the things that I think about is how we ought to be people who are always thinking about other people. And as I'm talking about this concept about and thinking about eternal life, this is something that Jesus emphasizes a lot that we don't really think about, but is thinking about other people, serving other people, loving other people, really connected to our eternal life? And the answer is yes. Not from the standpoint of works, because we can't save ourselves, but from the understanding that we have changed hearts because of God's grace. That we understand God's overwhelming love in our lives. That we then transcend that into the lives of other people. And we see that by our sacrifice and our service of other people. One of the things that I think about is how people who truly understand faith and service to Christ want to serve other people. (coughs) I mean, I see that we have a lot of servants in the church here. And that has built up my faith more than you could have imagined. You guys have set an example for me that I can't even express. Now when I think about that, service and thinking about other people is very hard. You know, people don't do it very often. People are naturally inclined to be selfish, and it's easier to be selfish, isn't it? But it's hard to be sacrificial and serve other people. But why? Why is that so difficult? Because one of the things that we know about serving and sacrificing for other people is that sometimes it will put us in the most complicated, most difficult, and hardest moments in our lives. Because when you start saying, because of what Christ has done for me, I'm going to get involved in the lives of other people, then you're going to be experiencing some of the hardest things in other people's lives. Their problems, their struggles, their hurts. Sometimes you see the worst sides of people. Sometimes you see hurts and pains and then that you've never experienced, but then by just spending time with people, you're seeing and experiencing it for the first time, that your heart breaks. And it's hard to really serve and sacrifice for people because sometimes you get burned by those who you love and try to serve. I mean, I've been burned multiple times. And sometimes when we get burned, we say, well, I don't want to experience that any longer, so I just won't serve. But... I think about Christ and all the ways how he's given me grace. And I think, you know, Christ, I have disappointed you so many times. And as a preacher, I should know even more times. But thank you for grace that you didn't leave. You didn't say, you know what, I gave you your chance and I'm done. I saw your worst part of your life, Micah, and I'm done. You know what, you burned me before, I'm done. I mean, that's the great thing about Jesus Christ and the kind of forgiveness and grace that he gives me. And, and when, I, when I start understanding God's love and grace in that way, that causes me to view people in a different way. It causes me to view them in a way that sees them for who they are, how God loves them, how God created them in their, His own image, how He 
send his own son to die on the cross. And then I think, you know what? That is how I need to be towards other people. That I want to be there when they're having the worst times in their life. I want to sacrifice for them because they have burdens that they can't carry by themselves. That God has given me an opportunity to know what it's like to love people to the point where you may not be loved back, but you love them despite. And that helps us to grow ever closer to the heart and mind of God. And so when I think about this idea of, is it really essential to love people, to care about people and serve people and have it be related to eternal life? The answer is yes. And as we're talking about eternal life, and this week and the next week, we're going to be looking at some questions where people are going to come up to Jesus and say, okay, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What good works must I do to inherit eternal life? And in one, the one that we're going to be covering today is one in regards to God, Jesus showing the kind of love and service and heart that we need to have. If we're really going to be ones who are going to come to know God and have the eternal life that he freely offers. And so if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. Now, this is a very common passage of scripture that many of you are very familiar with. It's one of my favorite parables in the Bible, but it's also one that has changed my life and my perspective. And that's the parable of the Good Samaritan. Who doesn't love that parable? But, uh, but oftentimes what we do with this parable is we merely make it a parable about helping people, a parable of having compassion on people. And, that, and that's a big part of it, don't get me wrong, but I want us to understand why Jesus actually told this parable in the first place. It wasn't just because Jesus was saying, hey, you should do something nice for somebody else, so here's a parable on this. The way that this parable actually came about was a question that a teacher or an expert in the law actually came to Jesus and he asked him the questions, what must I do to inherit eternal life? <laughs> and so this parable is not merely about having compassion and serving other people, but it is actually one in relation to eternal life. Have you ever really thought about that? That this is what, what, why Jesus actually tells the parable of the Good Samaritan is because he wants people to understand this is the heart you need to have if you want to have eternal life. And so what I want us to do is... Be, is I want us to break down this parable. I'm going to read a few sections and I'm going to talk about it because it's easy to miss a few things. But I want us to learn what, what Jesus is saying here. So let's read Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 29. It says, On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, What must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? I, I, I just love that, for instance, this, this expert in the law. An expert in the law was one who was a scholar of the Old Testament because that's the scriptures they had back then. But he comes up to Jesus and he asks the, an, an important question. And the question that I wish everyone in the whole world would ask, what must I do to inherit eternal life? That is one of the best questions, if not the most important question you could really ask. But, he's, but how does Jesus respond? He says, okay, well, what is written? What did God say before? You're a scholar of the Old Testament. This is a question that as a scholar of the Old Testament, you should be able to answer this. And how does the man answer? He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. He quotes Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, and Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. And how did Jesus respond? He said, you answered correctly. You see, this man had the right idea. He had the right, the right passages of Scripture. But him and, and Jesus even agreed in that sense. And even in Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through 31, when someone asked Jesus, well, what, are the greatest, what is the greatest command? He said to love God with, all, with your whole being, you know, heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then he said, love your neighbor as yourself. I mean, if, you're, if you are willing to do those two things, you're going to do everything else in the Bible. That's the amazing thing. And, but the difference here is, even though this teacher of the law and Jesus had the exact same answer, 